In this video, we're going to see how to create a new table in MySQL using the PHP MyAdmin administrative tool. We're going to focus on the specimens table. And if we take a look at what a specimen is, we think that a specimen is a plant that we can physically touch, a unique plant that maybe is in a yard or at a restaurant or in somebody's landscape. So we might have a white oak in our front yard, might have a white oak at a restaurant that we frequent, while these are both white oaks, they're two different specimens. So each specimen is going to have a unique ID, and it will likely have a latitude and longitude and some kind of description. Now we don't necessarily have to type white oak every single time we see a new white oak. Instead, we can put together a many to one relationship, if we're going right to left here, to a plants concept. So in other words, consider what a plant is, and let's call it the scientific definition of a plant. So a, a plant with genus, species, cultivar, and common name. So genus, genus might be Quercus, uh, species might be Alba, cultivar might be blank, and then common name might be white oak. So we can store that in one table over here called plants. And this plants table is going to have a primary key or unique identifier called plant ID. Over in the specimens table, we, the unique identifier is specimen ID. And if we have two white oaks, we'll have a unique specimen ID for each white oak, but then the plant ID will be the same because it's showing us a relationship to the scientific definition of the plant. So from the specimen to the plant, this would be a many to one relationship, or from the plant to the specimen, if you're looking that way, it's a one to many relationship. And you can see the crow's feet here are pointing at kind of a one side from the plant ID to a many side over here with a plant ID as a foreign key. So uh, saying that a different way, the plant ID on the one side is a primary key, the plant ID on the specimen side is a foreign key. If you've used databases before or designed them before, that's an obvious concept, but if not, it's a bit easier to visualize in a spreadsheet before we actually create the database. So consider our plants table. You see we have a plant ID here. Two is Quercus alba, or white oak. Three is Quercus rubrum, or red oak. Now take a look at the specimens table. You notice the specimen ID, which is our primary key, is unique. Note that the plant ID is not unique, but it's a reference to the plants table. So plant ID 2 means this is a white oak. Plant ID 3 means this is a red oak. And if you look at the specimens table, you can see that we have a white oak at Burger Chef in Clifton, a white oak in Flushing, Queens. So two different white oaks in two different locations, but they're tying back to the same plants table, the same record in this plants table. Now we have a red oak in London at the Canary Wharf and a red oak in Reykjavik, Reykjavik, Iceland. You see that those two are tied together because they have the same plant ID. That's eventually where we want to be, but we're not ready to be there just yet, just based on how our user input looks. We're going to take on a little bit of technical debt here, uh, that, but that's okay, we will resolve it eventually. The technical debt is we're not going to worry about the plants table yet. We'll come back and worry about that in a later series of videos. So we're going to add a redundant column to the specimens table called plant name. And essentially, this is going to be the genus, species, cultivar, and common name all put together in one redundant column in the specimens table. We'll call it cached. Now, why, why do we need to cache this? Why can't we just make a plants table right now? Well, at the moment, we're getting our plant data from a very large JSON stream from a different source that's a source that we do not own. So we do not have the plant data locally. So it makes a little bit of sense to go ahead and cache it locally until we can own that plant data locally. Also, if you take a look at our user interface right now, we don't have an autocomplete set up for the plant just yet. So we have to tweak the user interface a little bit to bring this plant and specimen concept together and make it one. We will get there. It's just going to be a bit of work that we're going to do eventually. Right now, our focus is purely on creating this plants table in our uh, MySQL database. So here's our PHP MyAdmin. I've already logged in. And I, I know I created a previous specimen DTO table using some Spring JPA and having it automatically create. But in this case, we're going to create our own new table. Reason being, we can't always have our Java programs just create database tables on the fly. A lot of times we're dealing with integration where we are integrating with an existing database. So I simply uh, go to the plant schema and I click on new. And now let's say specimen ID. 
and int and default. Uh, we're going to change this. Um, well, let's see. I'll tell you what. Let's make it AI. If you see over here, there's a... No, let me change the default. We'll take the default off. Just one moment. None. And I'm going to go to this AI. AI stands for auto increment, which is common when we're doing a primary key. So uh, it's going to add an index as well. This all looks good. We'll go ahead and choose OK. So that means that every time we enter a new row, it's going to give us a new specimen ID. Now we're going to do our plant ID because we know we're, go we know we're going to be there eventually. We might not have the data just yet, but we know we will eventually be there. So plant ID, we'll keep that as an int. Now latitude. Okay, caution here. Latitude, we tend to think of as decimal data. So careful on this one because if you actually choose a float or a double, I did that one time and it was a mistake because of some floating point arithmetic. It was not recording the accurate latitude and longitude. So this one, we might as well go ahead and just make it a VAR car. Uh, so let's make it a VAR car. It shouldn't be any more than 50. We don't necessarily need to add an upper bound on this one, but we'll go ahead and say 50. Uh, nullable, we'll go ahead and tick nullable. I'm going to go ahead and tick nullable on plant ID as well uh, for the moment because we know we don't have that marriage set up between the plant concept and the specimen concept, but eventually we'll take that nullability off. We'll go to uh, longitude. Longitude, spelled correctly. And once again, we'll make this a var car 50. And we'll say that this is nullable. If you don't tick this nullable box, you have to put a value in that column every time you save to the database. So careful there. The primary key should not be nullable, so it's unclicked. Generally, foreign keys should not be nullable. I did mention we're going to make a little exception here. Uh, but nonetheless, anything that can be nullable, be sure to check that nullable box. Okay, now we're going to need a few more columns here. So I'm going to say uh, add two new columns and also we need to give this we, whoops also we need to give this table a name let's call it specimens now you notice I'm doing everything in uppercase and you don't have to make everything uppercase in a database but a lot of times especially for legacy databases that is common it looks like PHP my admin had a little hiccup there it didn't give me exactly what I it kind of didn't refresh the page but that's okay we can still edit this table I simply click on specimens and I'm going to go back to structure and now what I can do is I can add some additional columns so I'll say add two columns after longitude and very similar look and feel as to what we had before so we're going to say description and we're going to make this one of our car um, description yeah we can make that fairly large 255 is fine uh, 512 would be fine uh, that's good. Let's go ahead and make that nullable because it is possible to enter a plant without a description. And then let's add that uh, that plant name. And just a moment, we'll scroll to the left. Uh, so we'll say plant, or we can say combined name. I call it a lot. We can say plant underscore name like so. And we'll make this one of our car. That one 512 sounds like a reasonable value as well. Let's go ahead and tick the null indicator to say this can be nullable. Scroll to the right. And we see that we have a comment field. So I'm going to say temporary, or we'll just say cached plant name. From online data source. So we kind of have a note that it's cached and we know that we can make this more efficient in the future. I go ahead and hit save. So the table specimens has been altered. I click on this and you notice that there is a uh, Nothing in the database just yet, nothing in the table just yet because I haven't saved anything. But we do have our specimen ID, plant ID, latitude, longitude, description, and plant name. And notice that the comment for the plant name appears right here. So the next thing we want to do is we want to store some data in this table. We can do that programmatically. If we want to test things out, we can go ahead and hit insert here. So specimen ID, we can just go ahead and leave that one blank. Uh, plant ID, we'll make that 83. Latitude, we'll say uh, we'll say 39.74, or actually, 30, yeah, 39.74 is fine. Uh, longitude, we'll say minus 84.51. Description, Eastern Redbud. Okay, and uh, plant name, well, uh, description, let's actually, let's make description different. We'll, we'll put Eastern Redbud in plant name. So we'll say Circus Canadensis. 
Eastern red bud. Plant name we might, or for description, we might say something to the effect of uh, spring blooms in Cincinnati, something like that. Okay. Okay, we can add another one if we wish. I'll go ahead and do a, just a quick one here. Uh, for this one, we'll give it a plant ID of 102 and latitude, we'll say, uh, for latitude, we'll say, we'll give it 38.50. We'll make this our Flushing Queens plant again. So longitude, uh, taking a guess on where Flushing is, but let's say minus 74.58, somewhere around there. Uh, description, a beautiful, Red Oak and Queens. Okay, and description, Quercus Rubra Red Oak. I will admit, I don't recall if it's Rubra or Rubrum, but that's okay, We're that's close enough. So two rows inserted. Let's go back and take a look at specimens now. And now you see that we have data in this table. We have our, our Quercus Rubrum, Red Oak, and our Circus Canadensis, Eastern Red Bud. If I wish, I can query this table. I can say select star from specimens where plant ID equals 83. So we can do this to look at all of the red buds that are in our table. And you see of the two rows that we have, it shows only that Eastern red bud. If I go back, I can do another query. I can say uh, select star from specimens where description there we go, it auto completes for us. Like, and then single quote percent queens, uh, percent single quote again. This will return any record that has queens in the description. So we run it again and we see that we get one result back, which is a beautiful red oak in queens. So we now have a table, we have data in it, and we can use this PHP my admin tool to query the data. So I hope this video has been helpful. In our next series of videos, we'll see how to programmatically put data into these tables and also how to retrieve data from the tables. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.